All right, Sprinter Allison Felix just made history, if you heard this, breaking the record for winning the most world championship gold medals. Felix sped past Usain Bolt's gold medal record at the World Track and Field Championships in Doha, Qatar, just 10 months after an emergency C-section. She earned her record-breaking 12th and 13th gold medal as a member of a 4x400 four, four relay team. And all, she now has 27 Olympic world medals. Must be heavy on your neck, Alice. <laughs> her, ba her baby girl, Cameron, was in Doha to watch her mom. Aww. Allison Felix is here for an interview that you'll see only on CBS this morning. Welcome, Allison. So let's go to that day that you broke all the records. So you get up. Do you eat breakfast? What do you eat? Are you listening to music? <laughs> Are you lacing up your shoes saying, I'm going to break a record today? So take us through the race before you get there. Yeah, I woke up. I had some oatmeal, some fruit, um, just relaxed a little bit. I did listen to a little music, a little Beyonce, got the alter ego going. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I didn't have any, you know, thoughts of breaking a record. You know, that wasn't on my mind. For me, this year was really about overcoming, and that's what was on my mind. So when you broke the record, you thought what? I was just like, wow, you know, I... I didn't expect it, you know, um, and it was just amazing the amount of support that I got. And also it was just reassuring that, you know, I'm on my path back. And in addition to beating international competition on the track, you also beat the odds in surviving a 13-hour flight with an infant on the way <laughs> yes. over. Yes. And by, the, by the way, on the way back to come yes. here. That is a yeah. huge I, I love your oh tweet gosh. there about the mom life. It feels like winning a gold. There. <laughs> but what, what was it like to have your daughter be witness, I think, for the first time now to, to these victories? Oh, it was amazing. You know, I want to be a good role model to her. And, you know, this year was all about fighting, you know, fighting for so much. And I want to eventually, you know, tell her that story of that. But she'll be able to see, you know, that I did try to overcome some adversity. Yeah. Your daughter spent 29 days in the NICU. Yes. Which, I mean, I, I had a, a week with my daughter in mm. the NICU. It's, it, those are really nervous days. They are. It's such a heavy place. You know, there's so much going on and um, so much doubt and uncertainty and she fear. She started at three pounds, right? Yes. How early was she? Um, she was two months early. Two months early. Yeah. yeah. So it was a really scary situation, and we really weren't sure, you know, which way things were going to go. So how did you know even that 10 months after an emergency C-section that you were even ready to get back on the track. Seems your body would still be out of whack. It still is. Okay. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm still getting there, you know, way to go. But, you know, just really talking to my doctors about, you know, um, this new body that I have and um, when I was cleared to get back out there. And I started slowly. It was a gradual process. I started walking and eventually my, made my way back. Did it feel really different? It did. You know, I was, it's very humbling. You know, things yeah. that once came really easy to me were now very difficult. You know, it's but, distressing. To, well, go ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead. Well, I was going to say, it's distressing to point out that most of the other countries that you're competing against on the track there, they, those, those runners come from countries where parents get protections in pregnancy and also uh, in, in maternity leave. You've taken a fight public to uh, make sure athletes get protections under these contracts. What does the country need to do and, and what more needs to be done at a corporate level to see changes happen? Mm -hmm. A lot. I mean, this is an issue that everyone is affected by. Um, and I tackled it in my industry, but I think that's just really the starting point. You know, I, that's why I want to leave behind is changes for the next generation and for my daughter. I love What's your it? argument yeah. in, the, in, the, in the essay. She says, you know, being pregnant is not a performance reduction. Yes. And that's, yes. These contracts were saying, oh, well, you're not running. You're not running yeah. as fast. Well, mm -hmm. you know, change the language, I think. Change the language, and you're still, you know, you're using my li likeness, and I'm making an appearances. You're still working extremely hard. You're still training as but well. After Nike, after you had this dispute with Nike, they changed the language in the contracts. Were you satisfied with what they did? Um, I was. I mean, I think you can always do more, but I was grateful. I was disappointed that I had to fight so hard, and that in 2019 that this is still an issue. I've since uh, moved on to a great partner, Athleta, and I'm really happy. I feel like our mission really in lines of. Um, empowering women and girls. But yes, I was, I felt like they did the right thing. What is the issue that we really need to understand exactly that, um, that we don't get? What is it? I think it's that, you know, once you have a baby, um, your career is not over, you know, that you can have a flourishing career on the track or wherever it is. Um, and uh, that there's still more left to give and that you shouldn't be penalized for that. So are we going to see you and your daughter at the Olympics in 2020? That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Working hard to be it, there. It'd be your yeah. fifth Olympics, but they never get old, do they? <laughs> no. Never, never. So sweet. <laughs> but let's talk about your daughter because your priorities really change. I love your Instagram on the 18th. You said, entering my third November, entering my 33rd year, stronger and empowered, learning to allow myself to be vulnerable. 
then by Thanksgiving, it's like, Houston, we have a problem with the baby. Yeah. And your priorities totally changed on that day. Yeah, my, you were going to a photo shoot. I was, and I was still trying to go when the, doc the doctor told me to go to the hospital. But my daughter really helped me to find my voice, you know, to speak out on these issues that I normally wouldn't have and um, really to try to create some change. So she's been my motivation. And without sounding stupid with two O's, how are you able to run? When you're, when you're pregnant. I'm serious. I'm not a runner, obviously, but yeah. how are you able to do that? Um, you just do it, you know? You're, you feel you a lot a heavier. Thing? I use um, a, a fit splint, you know, to help um, secure um, my belly. Um, and, you know, your body can do amazing things. Know and, you know, you make sure you talk to your doctor and that you're all cleared. But um, I continue to train, and I felt great, and I think it really made me stronger. Well, we're rooting for you in terms of yes. 2020. Yes, and also are. In, your, in your fight for, for, for women's rights and yes. for parental rights here. Thanks Thank so you. much for being here. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you, Allison.